What's up, everybody, and welcome back to For the Minions, a weekly podcast, podcast, whatever you want to call it, all about third-person MOBAs, coming up, uh, you know, very, very soon. Uh, this week, we don't have a whole lot of news. we got some pretty big stuff for Overprime, some stuff for Ethereal, nothing for Fault, nothing for Predecessor, but um, we're also going to talk about the poll this week, which I asked you guys how many of these games you th- you guys think will survive for at least three years. Um, the results were about on par with what I thought they would be. And then the uh, discussion topic is going to kind of tie into the poll is how long do we think that they can last? Like, like how long and how many of them can 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 last as a sustainable game? But um, and as always, uh, you, if you want a guest host on the show, just let me know and I'll add you to the list. But I am your host, the Man Goose. Joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I am fantastic, Man Goose. Happy to be back after my hiatus last week. You can't say always now because I wasn't here last week. So now it's all but one time <laughs> is the jelly knees. Yeah, yeah. But with us this week, we've got Odo. Odo, welcome. How are Thank you doing you today? Oh, uh, quite significantly better after the last few days I've been having. So yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, <laughs> and so, how did under you the weather? With... Oh, yeah. I, I got, I don't, I'm assuming it was COVID. Everything is still backed up. I don't get a test till the 13th. So tomorrow. <laughs> which will technically be today by the time they're watching this, I think. <laughs> uh, One of those and things. then it, it's going to be at some point. And then after that, uh, I find out if I do have COVID. And if I do, I got really lucky because it was a really mild case. If I don't, that should have sucked it up sooner. Just took a hot shower quicker. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as, as Jelly was alluding to, how did you get into um? How did you get into Paragon and like who was your favorite hero and all that? Uh, well, as anybody that's seen me talk about any of the heroes, I'm a Sparrow main. I've been a Sparrow main since day one, mainly because I was a transfer from League of Legends. I had played a little bit over there. Uh, I was playing Destiny two at the time. And then one of my uh, one of my fire team members like, hey, I found this really cool game. They showed me the trailer. Couple like a month or so later, I bought into the early, like the early beta, or the early access. I can't remember which. Back when there wasn't specific minions, everything was just the white minion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I kind of, I kind of really <laughs> inf- fell in love with like how gritty it looked to me. Because I was on PlayStation, still a filthy controller user, so I'm very <laughs> unique in that. And don't worry, I'd still smack everybody. They usually smack me harder, though. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went through. I had an insane amount of time on Sparrow before any of the mastery systems or something like that came out. So after that, I was like, "Cool, I have a reason to go play other heroes." <laughs> Very quickly found out I did not like Twin Blast. He just didn't fit my play style. Uh, Murdoch was pretty fun. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, not really much. I just kind of fell in love with the game and kept going. I, I mean, know, if you were a Sparrow main, you were among the most used and abused of players <laughs> in that game because <laughs> she was either broken or useless more often the latter. <laughs> Yeah. Well, when you just three, when you're running down lane, and I always played in the wrong lane because 3D MOBA didn't know any better. The two outer lanes looked the same, so I always went to off lane. <laughs> so I either had one, two, or three people in the lane trying to push against me, and I'm going, okay. <laughs> Which isn't fun as Sparrow, then... especially because you have no escape. Yeah, seriously. Oh, uh... <laughs> And it was it was kind of unique because during one game I'm pushing down left lane, and I see three of them coming down lane. They look at me, turn right into the jungle. They're like, "Yeah, no, I'm not dealing with this." Just all all three of them died. There you go. Just because they turned and tried to run away. That's the perks of Sparrow sometimes too, though. I'd forgotten about how over the 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 Prime Orb Guardian used to just be a giant pink jungle giant maiden. <laughs> Dude. Those that was great. Days. I love that. <laughs> he had placeholder written across his chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Th- those were the days. I, I, well, Sparrow's, Sparrow's changed a lot since then, too. I mean, like, her right. ultimate wasn't always the, the triple arrows, was it? It was, wasn't it something different at first? 
as far as I can remember, it's always been the triple arrows. Okay. Yeah. Her, there, uh, I know a lot of what, her stuff changed though, but uh, surprisingly, her passives mo- were weird. They were changing constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the, her passives? That's what it was. Yeah, I don't really <laughs> remember her passives because like. I wasn't super into knowing the kits. I was just like, ooh, arrow chick, spell chick, let's <laughs> destroy or get just decimated. Because I didn't know about the passives till after they were gone. <laughs> so I was just out there going. <sighs> you know who had the Perfect. most confusing passive was Fing Mao. Fing Mao. <laughs> Helicopter Man. Because his passive was. Offensive abilities buffed his defensive abil- abilities. Defensive abilities buffed his offensive abilities. But they never really explained what they considered to be defensive and offensive. And they never really explained how much. Like, Didn't he have yeah, like, it was like the most... one defensive to begin with? Wasn't that like his shield? His shield. But it's like, do they count hamstring as an offensive or a defensive ability? Exactly. And it was the most arbitrary thing on the planet, right? Like, <laughs> it felt like it changed game to game, where you're like, I'm pretty sure I used the same combo, and it behaved differently. Yeah. Like, a uh, Reaping Dash, like, you could use that as an escape or an engage. Do you count that as offensive or defensive? Yeah, it's exactly. like, it gives a little more information. They eventually just did away with that, because it confused the shit out of everybody, but... For good I, reason. I, I, yeah. I'm so happy I didn't know about that back in the day. Oh, I yeah. lost my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I remember trying to figure that shit out. Anyway, let's let's move on to the news and updates. Uh, let's start off with Overprime because they had a lot of big stuff going on. Uh, probably the biggest news for Overprime is their cinematic trailer went up. Um, their, well, their cinematic trailer went up. We didn't even talk about that yet. Let's talk about their cinematic trailer just in general because we didn't talk about that last week. That came up in between the, the two episodes. Um, what would you guys mm-hmm. think about the cinematic trailer? Uh, uh, Oda, I'll, I'll let you go. Oh, I, I loved it. Like it uh, from the beginning when they had Revan, I, I don't know his name and over by but Revan had showed up. I was like, okay, so you have the bounty hunter. What's going on? And then you see Sevrog walking up to a tree. It's like, okay. And then he shoots at him. Like, yeah, he kind of expected that. The counter sound, <laughs> wham, just smacks it. <laughs> Wait, bad mittens that shit away. <laughs> and I was like, it, it's. I, I loved everything about it. Uh, I think the voice lines are great. It looks phenomenal. I, I loved it. I, there's nothing I have a negative thing to say about it. If I can English today. <laughs> it's hard to English sometimes. Jelly, what'd you think about the trailer? I thought it was great. Honestly, I loved being able to see Revenant and Severog in there. Uh, I loved the like hidden lore of like Severog had was on a mission destroy some it seemed like idrisil equivalent of like the tree of life or right um was really cool to see that aesthetic for severog being that he touches things and they die and they wither away super cool idea uh overall was brilliant i thought what about you mangoose uh what do you think about severog having a face because they've had a face on him for a while now and he did not have a face in paragon but uh, i've seen i've seen it go both ways some people love it some people are like well, why the fuck does he have a face now? I personally like the. Uh, what did I say? I said it. It's. I said it. It's, it came out like a Harry Potter novel. I was like, I love Severog and the Mystery of the Hollow Hood. <laughs> <laughs> so I prefer I think, No Face. I think I would prefer No Face between the two, but I. It's like fifty point one percent preference more yeah, than anything. Right, right. It's just like yeah, I kind of prefer that, but I don't really have a preference either way yeah. either. Uh, my biggest biggest critique, and they asked, um, they have their content creator channel. They asked all the content creators what we thought of the trailer. And I was like, I think it's great. I said, I think you, you guys picked them very high impact, very visually pleasing heroes specifically for the trailer to draw people in. They're, none of them are heroes. I really play all that much. I didn't didn't play Rev, didn't, didn't play Countess, didn't play Sev all that much. But um, it's still, I think it was a great choice of heroes. But the one critique I gave them is how you're going to have a big ass Yggdrasil tree and not have the Fae in there somewhere. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which they thought that was funny. And it was, of course, a joke. They don't have to have the Fae in there just because there's a tree. But I would have liked to have seen her. Um, I think the overall <laughs> quality of the trailer was really good. Some of the animations, some of the mm-hmm. animation work looked a little janky. But, um, I mean, over, like, what the, who the fuck am I? Like, I, I definitely could not have done any better. For the most part, it felt like the start and stops of animations were the worst part. 
Once mm -hmm. they were in motion, you didn't really notice it as much. But those those moments, the one that like I can think of clearly thinking about it is the shot where it's Revenant standing over the in front of the opening of like a jungle path or something. Yeah. And he yes. stops and he's like hardcore clunk. And it was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, OK, that was weird. <laughs> Oda, you were about to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think I, I think it was kind of like a good choice to keep the Fae out of it, uh, specifically because if they had added her, they would have had to kind of take like a different short story run with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was, I think I definitely, a joke I know I, <laughs> I would honestly like to see it a, like a second part to it where the fade does show up at some point during it. I think that would be cool. Have like a continuating trailer where they're all mm -hmm. one piece and it turns into a movie like at the end when they're all released. Well, they I are think supposed to do their cool. Netflix series, but that's supposed to be more of a graphic novel, I think, than, than an actual animated thing, but with that though, Severog could touch the Aegisil tree, right? And it slowly withers out and the Fae is inside the tree. That that could be their <laughs> lore of how the Fae comes into existence. And just blasts him in his face with harvest nettles. <laughs> <laughs> Nature got him. <laughs> I wish that was her voice line. Nature <laughs> Overprime hit me up. I'll happily do the face voice lines for you. Just saying. <laughs> Just a male voice on the Fey, just nature. And there you go, bam. <laughs> a lot of people called attention to the fact too, like it's like a fork in the road. You got to choose which way you go amidst like all these games coming out at the same time. Like, uh, make a choice, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I don't think that was their intent, but it's kind of a funny thing to point out. And then, uh, along with the trailer, it got uploaded by IGN, um, which is you know a huge content creation thing for gaming and um yeah uh the last time i checked it had like sixty thousand views or something like that that's hard to tell what it's up at to now but yeah that's a big deal for them that is a huge deal mm -hmm. that gives them so much exposure and that just kind of that kind of came out of left field for me but i mean i guess i should have expected it with the way they're they've been acquired by netmarble and have all this funding and everything so really cool stuff yeah, it, there it's huge that they chose to go on such a large platform, right? You, even being unreleased or, or it, which makes me feel like the release is coming very quickly. I know we have the closed beta test on the 22nd. Um, but after that, I basically, I'm thinking if that goes well, they're going to hit the ground running very shortly thereafter. Mm. Um, because doing it on IGN, that's a pretty big statement to, uh, to get out there. And you and I talked about it, Mangoose. It also is a big thing for all of the Paragon successors that they're getting in front of the gaming community at large first, instead of just the Paragon community, it, it could make a differentiation in which game builds in the in the space because of that. Right. Because now anyone that didn't know about Paragon or the or the Paragon successor projects now is going to equate Pred and Fault to Overprime if that was their first right their first uh, entry into that space. I think there might be a little bit of backlash when it first comes out because a lot of people, like, if you look through the comments, there's a lot of people that just straight up didn't know that Paragon was being remade at all. Mm -hmm. If they come into Overprime thinking it's just going to be, like, Paragon 2.0, it's, I'm 100% it is not going to be Paragon 2.0. They're going to be very, um, I think they're going to be angry and there's going to be a lot of backlash there. But again... The Paragon community as a whole is not what they should be shooting for. They should be shooting for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wish they would have had some gameplay in that. Um, I'm sure they'll probably also release a gameplay trailer, hopefully on IGN as well. But that, that was one. A lot of the comments were like, is this Overwatch? Like, people didn't know what it was or what it was supposed to be like or anything. Um I don't know. I, I kind of like that they left it up to people. Like, it's a mystery. Like, people... If, if they're intrigued by that trailer, they can look more into the game and then find out. You know what I mean? I think with no defined release date in sight, it's better to leave it vague. And like you said, for the people that really care, they'll go find it. And then in the future, they can release something else. A gameplay trailer or another cinematic tied with a gameplay trailer that then has an, a, a, a hardcore name drop, a hardcore release date. Like the really finalized, this is when you can play this game kind of video right Odo, what do you think uh, i think it's gonna be good for them to get on there uh beyond that i really don't have much to say it's the first one to get 
any kind of massive response like that, from what I understand. And I think you are right. A lot of people are going to start comparing the rest of them to Overprime. I also kind of think a little bit, a little bit off topic here for a second, but I kind of feel like Overprime could have been like one of the stages of Paragon if it had survived with as much as they changed the map and everything. Uh, Maybe the, not all the hero kits, but the map design. I could see something that would have been epic would have tried. So I'm I'm kind of curious. Not only that, but having multiple maps, like we don't know if they're going to have multiple maps in the in the closed beta, but you know, in previous iterations of Overprime, they've had multiple maps. You could choose to play either Monolith or Legacy or their three lane ARAM map. That's something people ask for from Paragon for uh, for fucking forever for as long as there was both maps that existed. So it does seem like a feel like a continuation of Paragon in that way, in that they're giving us what we had asked for with Paragon, if indeed they have those maps, which I think eventually they will. If not on release, definitely. I don't think maybe that they will have pure Legacy and pure Monolith anymore because their map is kind of that cross in mm -hmm. between. Um, but for all we know, they could they still could, or they could be coming out with their own versions of those maps that are altered in different ways. Even if they just had the map that we've seen them play on and the ARAM map, that would be a step forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just looked it up. The IGN video is up to 70,000 views nice. in two wow. days. That's a lot and, of people getting eyes on. And their video got 25,000. And I, and while there is certainly some overlap there, that it's not the full 25,000, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, that's a lot of eyes on. Um... Oh, they also had another social media contest. Like, if you share the the trailer, um, it's just random chance this time. You could ten random people can win a t shirt, which somebody posted in their Discord. Now IGN's now IGN can win an Overprime t shirt because they shared the trailer. <laughs> the, Perfect. The thought that IGN only shared the trailer because they wanted a chance to win a t shirt had me laughing so freaking hard. It had me giggling like all day. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. IGN, now IGN deserves all ten. Give it to him. Just give him all ten. <laughs> call it a day. But this time, instead of just having YouTube Shorts, it's just any social media. You share their their thing on any social media, add them, and then post it in their Discord. Um, you can you have a chance at winning a a sweet Overprime T shirt, which you can see Ranger, I believe, wearing in um, their New Year's thing. Mm -hmm. So. And Overprime's then, doing work. They are really they're going yeah. at it. They're getting the right moves. They're doing the right things. It's really it's really cool to see. Um just like if I take a step back and just from a purely Paragon fan standpoint, it's really cool to see one of these projects get that level of recognition. Yeah. Uh and then let's see. They posted in their work in progress this uh phase skin, which is we talked about it before the show. It's pretty much just the um, the initial release face skin, but she's got a tail, some taller ears, a, a Siamese cat backpack. Pretty cool. Yeah. From the concept art, it looks <laughs> the tail and ears look really high quality in comparison to the rest of it, which is kind of strange, but. <laughs> um, well, you got to reach for a certain demographic. <laughs> yeah. Make sure right. they reach all of them. <laughs> What what demographic is that exactly, Odo? Huh? Yeah, what you talking about there, Odo? <laughs> yeah, what, what what demographic is that? Mangoose and I are definitely not a part of that demographic, so you should really tell us. <laughs> we wouldn't know. We wouldn't yeah. know. <laughs> well, Kalia clearly... and Ethereal definitely doesn't fit in that demographic either. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a furry ass skin. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. Uh, I want to see how much her tail moves, like mm, how mm -hmm. well how well her tail is animated throughout the uh, the skin. That would be cool to see. Just give the Speaking tail. Of that, I I happen to know about something that both of you will crack up about. They actually made tails that like move and they work like based off your body heat. What? What? I'm I'm sorry. I'm there, sorry. There is what? there is mechanical tails <laughs> that work off based on your body heat. Oh, we were joking about being furries, but goddamn, Oda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure this is information I needed. Did, how, did, how, did, how did they attach to, their, to your body? <laughs> uh, 
Shit, I don't know. It's been a while. How do they I take your tip? I know there's one way to take your tip, and I know that's a way you can attach a tail to your body. <laughs> that's probably the way it works. I don't know. I just I, remember I, I seeing it. That is plenty. Any of you at home can do your own research. <laughs> Hey, ma make sure to send one to each jelly and goose. <laughs> and we'll, get them both, we'll get them both on camera wearing them. The first fan mail we receive, Mangoose, is going to be mechanical furry oh, tails. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, let's end this overprime stuff on a bit of a wholesome note. Uh, in their developer's <laughs> diary, Ranger put a post. I forget exactly what it said, but he said uh, he had to go talk to the chief executive today, and like he was nervous, but he thinks it, it went really well. I just thought that was just so endearing, knowing that they started out as such a small team of fans dedicated to making like a Paragon project, and now he's talking to the chief executive of Netmarble. Like, holy fuck! Like that's gotta that's be insane. Yeah, that's terrifying. That is such a just a a massive shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just that's a huge. Feather and Ranger's cap too, like right? right, like being able to say that he did that as well, is huge. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad he shared that too, because that's just that humanizes Ranger quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's like a post like that. I'm sure he was just posting just to be posting, but when you read through something like that, it humanizes him while also showing off, you know, how far they've come and the backing that they have. So it's like a dual purpose sort of thing. I, very cool post. Very cool post. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's move on from Overprime. Let's get into Ethereal. Not a lot coming out of Ethereal this week, but we did get Talos' theme. Uh, Jelly, I know you heard Talos' theme. I'm sure you're the one that posted the damn thing. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oda, did you hear Talos' theme? Uh, yes, uh, I did. What did you think? It wasn't quite what I expected for him. It, it was... In, in an odd sense, it was a lot calmer than I expected from the little bit that I know about his lore. It's a lot, it's a lot calmer, but it, it's definitely driven. He's not just like, it doesn't sound like he's someone just to lay around. Like you could tell, like, especially in the beginning, it sounds like he's either chasing something, which would make more sense than him being chased. But yeah, it sounds like he's with the, the, with the beats that they're going in. It sounds like he's chasing after something. So I think it's. I think it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That that would be the only critique I have for it, as I wish it would ramp up a little faster. But mm -hmm. I don't know how they're they're going to be used in games. So I don't know how I want them to ramp up or or down <laughs> or whatever. But um, yeah, I think it it gets better and better as it goes along. Um, yeah, really cool. The, all these themes are really cool. I just my idea though out of all of this is I came up with this when we were talking about Sexual is that he needs. He needs to have, I wear my sunglasses at night. I want 80s themes for all of them, and I want Talos's to be Shout. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. Yeah. I did see you going through this with people in the community Discord the other day, yes. and people were going through, like, Skyrim, Dovahkiin shouts, right? The whole nine yards. I was like, geez, people, <laughs> I got it. Oh, uh, y'all no, need to start I... licensing, licensing some 80s pop music. That's all I'm saying. There we go. I love... Talos' theme. It's not my favorite, but I do love it because I think, and one of the comments kind of echoed my kind of feeling behind it as well, is it felt like you were watch like if you're watching a movie, right, it's Talos going from like different backdrops, like tracking through something, tracking mm. down a creature, hunting down a creature, right? And I think that that aspect is really cool. Like that, that, that you can, like if you visualize the different places and the different realms in Ethereal, that he can be crossing these different backdrops finding tracks, finding these things. And I think that was the cool aesthetic that I saw someone posting about in the comments for it. Oh, right on. That's neat. And then um, we just also want to remind you guys that the open weekend is uh, the 21st through the 23rd. And I, I know I've said it a million times, but people still ask all the time. If you want to play, just go to their... Do, um, do they even have to go during the, the play test? Just go to the website, make an account, and they can play, right? Yep. Can, can they make an account right now? They cannot right now because okay. it's still being worked on, but they should be able to shortly. Okay. So yeah, just on the 21st, go create an account on undyinggames.com and you can play the game. Like people yep. keep asking, but... It is that simple. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are no keys this time. There's no there's nothing special. Make an account, play the game. That's all it is. Yeah. 
And, uh, okay, let's move on to Fault. We got no updates for Fault. They haven't released anything for a little bit, which, uh, I kind of understand. They've been, they've been hard at work on Fault. Uh, Oda, you play Fault quite a bit. Um, what's your feelings on the current state of Fault? It's definitely been a lot better since the optimization patch a few weeks ago. Other than that, I don't know, my skills like a jenga tower it, it just falls flat and just <laughs> dies to points so it's i'm not the right person to be asking <laughs> if i step away from the game for more than a day or two i go from like because i i check the elo for shits and giggles i'll go from like 1100 to like eight <laughs> in kind of two days so i'm not i'm not the, the main thing that is is the ledges this, this, mm. Once that gets fixed, then you stop randomly stopping on an inhib or a tower ledge. Minor gripe, but it's aggravating. As soon as that gets fixed, <laughs> the better. I did have a Decker game where there was somebody running away, and I threw the perfect Decker ball to catch them as they were as they were going from like it was like the, one of those Kobe shots, you know, and exploded on the rim of the tower. Oh. behind him and didn't kill him. I'm like, oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more tilting than throwing a perfect Decker bomb and having it not work. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed to hit an invisible wall and explode. <laughs> um, I think Fault's at a... It's in a really good place right now, game-wise. Um, like, yeah, there's still bugs here and there, but it, it, there's always going to be bugs. I think it's in a better place now than it has been in, in for freaking ever. Like, the gameplay is pretty smooth. They have a good gameplay loop. Everything's fairly balanced. Um, I, I've been enjoying Fault. Um, like I was saying on uh, Windows Partner Panel, like when I queue by myself, I'm matched appropriately against skill level, which is pretty bad. But like I'm not great. <laughs> it's, but when like, but most of the time, like I'll play with subscribers, and it's like we'll have people that are just like way down here and then we'll have people that are like way above me and you never know what you're going to get matched up against. So those games aren't as fun, but I think if you solo queue a lot, you'll probably have a lot more fun with fault. The, the big problem though, right now, I think is 10 minutes into every game, somebody's trying to surrender. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how well you're doing or how, or how poorly you're doing. Like everybody just constantly, it's like they've never played a MOBA before they don't realize that there's comeback mechanics and that, and you know, sometimes there are games where it's definitely, you're going to lose. Like you could tell that you're just, you're just getting sunk. But like, if you're only down a few kills and like, yeah, maybe they got your tower first, but like, that's not, you're definitely going to lose. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The community that the game is in a great state They're The players, I don't think are there are some really positive helpful players out there but i think y you don't remember those as much as the guy that flames you constantly mm -hmm. or yeah this is something i've been seeing why don't you go learn that hero in ai mode and it's like i knew yep. that was going to be coming as soon as they added an ai mode it's like you can't fucking learn how to pvp in ai mode like ai mode is great for learning mana costs and, and testing things out and getting a general feel for the for the hero but you can go but as smart as those bots are they are just as dumb at the same time yeah. so it's not an and effective way to train dumber. by any means i can go 30 and zero with kalari in ai mode definitely not going to do that against real people See, now I'm just going to go into games, and whenever there's a Murdoch on my team, I'm going to flame him for being worse than the AI Murdoch, oh though, God. at Ultimates. <laughs> yeah, that's because everybody's worse than the AI Murdoch. <laughs> Holy shit. He, um... I was coming up with AI Murdoch. I, I, I think I was playing Severog, because I've been trying to learn how to jungle clear well with him. See, that's another great thing for AI mode, like, learning how your jungle clear and rotate, like, mm -hmm. rotations like that. But, like, I came up on him. He spun and pushed me... But his, he never, like, it was like a blink. It was like, boop, boop. He never, yeah, he never really turned. Like you it's just barely saw him just instantane. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Motherfucker <laughs> hits every snipe. AI Murdoch for the win, man. <laughs> uh, I think that's about all I had for Fault. Unless you guys had anything you wanted to say about Fault. I think, I think that's it. 
Yeah, at least until we get into the it. discussion topic. But yeah. Uh, predecessor. Um, nothing again. Nothing for predecessor. That's not. That's not unusual. <laughs> I wonder if they'll be pressured by all the information that's been coming out of Overprime to start being a little more transparent with the community again. I think they have to be. I think they have to be feeling the fire a little bit from Overprime, especially with the hard push that they've been making recently. Right? That there's because, like I said, is the community, the community, the gaming community at large now is going to recognize Overprime as the figure, and everybody else is following in their shadow. Right. Whereas before it was kind of predecessor being that and Overprime and Fault kind of in their shadow. Right. And Overprime flipped that script real fast. I would just say if they if they do start making stuff, I'd be uh, and putting stuff out there. I, I would be really careful and I wouldn't try to go too fast to get something out there just because someone else is taking like a step forward farther than everyone else. I'd be very careful with it because. <laughs> We, it definitely we, we, needs we don't to be need, calculated. We, we don't need a repeat of SMS saying, here's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Uh-huh. Six months later. Here's another one. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of examples to be given about SMS in this instance, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, they're going to have to do something and step up. Because people, mm -hmm. are, people still remember... Who they are, but it's gonna—it's not gonna be long till everybody just knows Overprime, and that's it. If predecessor doesn't step up and do something, you know. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Predecessor's right. definitely, despite uh, in your poll that we see every week, right? Predecessor's numbers are consistently up there, but you've got a Paragon community that's been knowing about these projects for years, right? So that's a slightly skewed number. If if you were able to pull that IGN community, Overprime is gonna be basically the only thing that they know, right? Which is not a good sign for either fault or predecessor. But yeah, that exactly. again, that's a whole that's part of the discussion topic. We can get yeah. into that in a second <laughs> here. It's gonna be a good discussion <laughs> this week, I think. <laughs> well, let's move on to the poll. And I changed up the poll this time. What I asked was, how many of these games do you think will be able to survive and be sustainable for at least three years? And the options were one, two, three, four, and zero. So 30% of you guys thought that only one of them will survive. 53% thought that two would survive. 7% thought three. 1% thought four. And 9% uh, thought uh, felt there was going to be zero, which I, th I, I thought it was interesting that more people think that none of them will survive than think that four of them will survive. And I think that's absolutely on the money. I think it's all or nothing, really. But... um. I also think uh, I wasn't surprised by 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 these numbers by 53% being by by two of the games being 53%. And I think we all know that it's this one and Ethereal. It's like yep, it's, that, that was my thought exactly. It's like, <laughs> I think Overprime and Ethereal. Well, I think Predecessor and Ethereal. Well, I think Fault and Ethereal. I think the Ethereal is usually that second one. Yeah, um, and I think that's for good reason. There, there's no realistic world where two of these uh, Paragon successors can survive into eternity, right? That it's just not going to happen. One will beat out the others. Right. Over over however long it takes, potentially. But at the end of the day, it's, it, it's very, very unlikely that two of them thrive. And I think we're seeing that partly with Fault in that as these other two are ramping up, Fault is slowly dying down, right? And that's even after their free weekend, even after the optimization patch, even after patch 14, their numbers went up for a second and then immediately are, have been climbing back down to where they were. Yeah. I think that's where I'm going to disagree slightly. I, I think it is possible for two of them to succeed, mainly because I don't think Overprime's going to rely on the NA region too much. Hmm. I think even if it flops over here, there's so many uh, players over in Asia and the rest of the world that even if it flops here over there, it could be a number one game and we'd never know about it. Yeah. So That's I think the, overprime the Eastern is market a very for overprime. Position. Yeah. The Eastern market for overprime could be massive. So you think there could be a, a Western Paragon and Eastern Paragon and then Ethereal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think that's a possibility. Yeah. I, I mean, I can see that. I can see that. I, I still think in the end, like um, like I was talking about with Windu last last week, 
the the ones that are relying on the Paragon community, like you can only rely on the community so much, but you do need to rely on them. Like everybody knows when you make like a YouTube channel or something, the more people you have, the easier it is to grow. The more subscribers mm -hmm. you have, the easier it is to grow because YouTube just shows that many more people. It's the same way with these games. Like they start with this base community, which is the para refugees. And the more of those para refugees they have, the easier it's going to be for them to grow and reach out to other people from other games. But there's only so much of that community and you can't share it around. And people are, we've seen it over and over again. People are very diehard for whichever game they think is going to be the best. So whoever gets that biggest share of the Paragon community is going to have a much easier time when they grow. And I think as they grow, they're just going to cancel out the other two. I think mm -hmm. fault. I don't think fault predecessor and Overprime. I don't think they can coexist unless it's something like Oda said, where Overprime just takes over the eastern market and one of the in the one of the other two takes over the western market. I, mean, I the, think the Paragon players are going to be like a, are a solid base that any of these games have to capture. Well, maybe not have to capture, but if they can get a majority of them, the Paragon players are a solid base to start. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But and yeah, I think I mean, the interesting thing here is, I, and not to be cynical or skeptical of Fault and SMS, I don't know how Fault and SMS survive the next year. Because if Predecessor and Overprime come out, they're already on their last legs. And it, it literally could be the thing that just puts them out. And they have to really step it up in terms of a, of a community, player base, game, the whole nine yards, to I think even stand a chance at surviving either of those two, either of those two games releasing. Right. Uh, well, let's start into the discussion topic then, because we've already kind of led, in, <laughs> led into it. Um, yeah, I think, um, a lot of what you see, like if you check out the comments on that IGN post for Overprime, you see so many comments where like this and predecessor are going to lead the way this and predecessor, this and predecessor, or just Overprime or somebody will be like, I don't really care about this. I just care about predecessor. The only time you see fault mentioned in those comments is when people are shitting on them. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Like that Which is a terrible sign. Yeah, that can't fly. Like, I believe in Fault. I think the I think Fault is a great game right now. But you got to be realistic. You got to look at stuff like this, and understand that while the game may in a be in a good place, the company is on a cliff right now, and they're about to be pushed off by Overprime and Pred. Yep. And one one big announcement from either of those two could be all it takes. And, yeah. and it definitely fault the the game aside the the just the player base of fault definitely feels like it's players waiting for the other two to come out yeah yeah i would agree with that yeah it's people's filler game mm -hmm. it's been the one that's been out so people are playing that because it's the only one that's out right and that's they from what we've seen sms has done very little to try and make those players actually fault players instead of just it's what's available players well i think that's sad because i think they've done a really good job with fault I, they just they shot themselves in the foot so many times from mm -hmm. the beginning that it's going to be hard for them to to pick themselves back up and get back and back ahead because at one point in time fault was by far the most popular of all these paragon successors because they actually gave us a game first but like we said, the, the the launch didn't go so great, and then it was buggy for a really long time. And then they did that stupid ass season pass, which a lot of people hated, and um, just it was just mistake after mistake after mistake. Like the way I explained it is, in the army, I, you had soldiers that they were trying their best, and God damn it, they had a lot of heart. But every time you gave them a task, they would somehow fuck it up. A lot of times mm -hmm. it wouldn't be their fault. Like it would just be extenuating circumstances. But you knew for a fact. If you gave that soldier something to do, it was going to get fucked up somehow or some way. That's what fault seems to me. Like they, their heart's in the right place. They're trying their best, but something always happens. And going back to faults like Alpha Weekend before they did the release in July of 2020, um, that coming out of that Alpha Weekend, people loved fault. People were yes. so excited about fault to come out 
and play it and be able to play it consistently and all of those things. And then the release just killed all of their momentum. And they basically went back to square one because of it. Like it just completely just shot themselves in the foot, like you said, Mangoose, and made it really, really hard for them to, to get the engine going again. Yeah. I, I felt that their early tests, their closed beta tests or closed alpha tests, whatever you want to call them, I felt that the game played better during those tests than, in the, than it did on early access. I think they tried to do too much yep. in between. I think that's kind of what happened between patch 13 and patch 14. They tried to do a little too much without finalizing everything and then released the patch. Again, They they that was their shot at redemption, but they released an unoptimized patch. A lot of people came back and were like, eh, it's still, still not cool. And then they left. And then did a free weekend on the unoptimized patch. Yes. Which, oh, zero again, another me. thing, another instance of that concept, Mangoose, of you're doing the right thing. You're going pushing forward. Yes, there are bugs and optimization issues. Sure, fix them, get them out. But then instead of doing that, they're like, and we're going to do a free weekend and lower the price after a bunch of you probably just bought the game. Good luck. <laughs> like, uh, what? Like, what? Who decided this was a good idea? And it wasn't. And we've talked about this before. They announced it after they knew there were problems, which shows an even a, a, a worse concept for me from these companies is showing that they're also not learning from their mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's been something I've noticing. I've been noticing as well. It's like if they had been learning and improving from making the mistakes, a lot of the stuff wouldn't be an issue for me because they're mm -hmm. a fairly new company. They're at I don't know how long anyone had any experience before this uh with game design or not, but they like you said they're not learning from what they're messing up there in the whole process. Which is kind of, to me, just looking like it's just going to be a repeat. Just throw in a washing machine, hit run, wait for it to stop, hit run again. Eventually, you got to change the shit over and make something different. I love that analogy, Odo, actually. Yeah. Because it you pull it out, it smells fresh, you put it on, and then within two days, you're going, this is dirty as hell. And you take it off and put it back in the wash and wait for the next patch. Right? Like, that's, that's fault. In, yeah. in a nutshell and it sucks and like and i'll even use ethereal as an example of this right ethereal was basically the poster child for not learning from their mistakes for oh years yes right <laughs> yep. like and work for ethereal i know that that was the like before i even worked for them that that was a big problem and that was something that mangoes you and i over the last year of doing ete have basically been like stop doing this crap learn from your mistakes yeah. stop doing this get over it like this is unacceptable and fault does not understand that yet. And it's, it shows. I just want to interject real quick. I said army and soldiers, but a lot of you guys know that I was also a Marine. I didn't say Marines because Marines don't fuck up. They just take an alternate route. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get a commendation for original thinking, <laughs> but uh, ethereal. Um, here's a mistake. I think you guys are making with ethereal. You're keeping it on your own launcher. I think you need to go on Steam or Epic Games. I really, really do. Um, that's I keep that. That's a question people keep asking. Like, is this going to be on Steam? Is this going to be on Steam? Mm -hmm. And that just gives you a lot more visibility. Now, don't make the mistake of putting it on Steam if it's not in a great place, because then you're going to get mm -hmm. shit Steam reviews and it'll never go anywhere. Like finalize it in the in with, with with your own launcher but i think in the future if ethereal is going to survive in the long run if they're going to hit that three-year mark like i said in the poll they need to come to steam or epic games or some kind of other platform other than your own um oda what do you think because uh jelly's gonna be biased as fuck <laughs> I, I figured he would be. but no I'm, I'm with you goose and, and for a slightly different reason it, it's a lot of people who aren't following ethereal right now don't know anything about it and there's a good chance that they're not going to see when it comes time for it any advertisements you're going to do and with it being on steam they're looking through because i'm broke so i'm consistently looking through the free games i picked up like five or six mobas in there just because they were free i gave them t like i tried vainglory i liked that for a while uh i tried smite on pc for a little bit it was terrible just bad it was on playstation <laughs> and if i can't a few others i can't even remember the names of but just because they were there i picked them up it's one of the things where it's 
do you do something to get more eyes on it? Or just having one place over here? Kind of like the yeah. having more eggs in different baskets than all of the eggs in one basket. Right. And that's... So I, I can only comment comment on Ethereal so much, right? Yeah, right. Part yeah. of some of these decisions are above my pay grade. I don't, I'm not the guy that makes those decisions. <laughs> um, and there's an extent that I agree with you, Odo, in the people that don't know about Ethereal don't know about Ethereal, just flat out. It's not even like, oh, I think I've heard of that. It's complete... Right, Mangoose gets comments on almost every Ethereal video of what is this game? Who is this? Yeah. What is what's going on? Despite a year of videos. Uh, by the same token, Ethereal is not mass marketing either. Ethereal is not an estate to mass market from right. what we've talked about before, Mangoose. Oh, yeah. is, is, is it's just not in that place yet. So it's not a bad thing necessarily that people don't have that idea. But it's also not a good thing that they don't have an idea of it either. So it's it's kind of that middle ground at the same time. Now, predecessor, they're so far ahead right now that it, it, it's difficult to imagine them ever falling behind any of the other games. But I think if they continue down the path where they're just not speaking to their community at all, it could go that way. Like, we've seen the massive swings the community takes with all these mm -hmm. Paragon successor projects. Like nobody used to give a shit about predecessor and they cared about meta buff. Now it's all about, you know, they went all, all to predecessor. And then when fault came out, nobody gave a fuck about predecessor anymore. They all shifted over to fault. And like, we see these massive shifts in the community at any point in time, they can shift away from predecessor. And I think predecessor needs to do a little more on their part to keep that, to keep the community's interest. I, I will say, um, one of my subscribers showed me a graph that he made and I, he, he wanted to remain anonymous. He doesn't want me to show, give out the, the link to this graph and stuff, but he was tracking discord membership between all four games. Hmm. Predecessor is about the only one that's showing steady drop off. Like they're mm -hmm. the way they're by far the highest. Like they're that actually definitely the highest, me. but they're, they're losing. They're, they're actually losing members more members than any of the other games um fault fairly steady like the free weekend they gained a bunch and then afterwards they lost a bunch and then they then they keep losing like ethereal has stayed pretty steady and over prime is of course on the rise because of all the the news that's been coming out for them but i mean i mean that that shows the trend absolutely and the given predecessor in july when they had their last oh there's last stress test right? Predecessor's lead on comparison to all of the other games, massive. Their lead now, if you measure uh, the same way again, significantly less big, less of a lead, right? Overprime is, is way, is, if not passing them, very, very close to doing so. And even to an extent, by association, Fault has grown on Predecessor in, in terms of community and player base. That is terrifying. <laughs> and that's that comes purely from a lack of information. That's not even because the game isn't playable. That's just a because they've basically gone dark since that test. Right. But I mean, at this point, they're Walmart and every other one's like a mom and pop store. 100%. So like, they they, can they turn it on and it, it just goes. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's still I, I really want to see them interact with their community more because they could they could lose it to Overprime right now. They could lose mm -hmm. their entire oh, yeah. community. They, to they Overprime. really need to put something out because like, I don't even think they'd have to put something big out just to get people drawn back in. Just well, the last thing they put out was that recap, which a lot of people found insulting. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a lot of comments from that were like from what I've been talking about. That are like, man, they didn't fucking even tell us anything. That wasn't like. That wasn't news that was like like people are actually genuinely pissed off about that it was actually you see a lot of people drop off out of their discord after they they put that post i think people were like holding out for some kind of big predecessor news and when their big news was a fucking recap of shit they've already done that everybody knows about pandering people were yeah. like oh fuck you and then just kind of left i mean I mean, we talked about it briefly before man because i was pissed when that went out yeah i send you messages about it i was pissed <laughs> I was one of those people like, really? Like you'd go dark for seven months and then that's what you're going to put out? 
No, like that's just, it's sad. And it, to, to contrast that, they don't have to be putting out big news being as large as they are for one thing. Like we said, the machine will just go by itself, putting out, putting out even semi-consistent once a month. If you just said like, hey, this is what we've been working on this month, that'd be plenty. Yeah. You don't have to drop release date. You don't have to do any of that. Yes, you're going to get the questions about it, but that's inevitable. Right. And and kind of the proof of the pudding of that is Ethereal. Ethereal's been putting out updates, n nothing crazy massive necessarily. Right. Yeah, we've had a couple stress tests, but putting out updates, and that's enough to just get the machine churning. Just to just to keep people informed, to keep people going forward, that's enough. And then and even on our side, we see the numbers reflecting that with with smaller posts like that. They don't have to do something crazy, but going silent is not better. Right. I, I think another another thing we need to consider too, like when you compare false chances to to predecessors' chances of surviving for at least three years, fault doesn't have to pay anybody back. Like all the mm -hmm. money they make, they keep. Like they they never borrowed from anybody. Like Omega Studios did. They don't have to pay anything back. They might just be sustainable because they don't have to make as much in order to sustain the game. So they might actually outlast predecessor in that way. I think predecessor is poised to have a very, very um, good chance of actually surviving for at least three years, but they, they, they better start churning out some numbers because they got a lot of money to pay back to people. I mean, the Epic grant, they, they don't got to pay that back. That's a grant. But like all the mm -hmm. money that they borrowed from all these angel investors and like different investment groups and stuff, the, those people expect a return on their money. And it could turn sour very quickly at the same time. It, it, yeah. For predecessor, it could basically go hardcore one way or the other. And they'll either blow up and it'll be great, or it could very quickly just nosedive into the ground and that'll be that. Yeah. Because of that concept of having to pay people back. Right. And that's, you're right. Fault could effectively coast for the next three years, not get better, not get worse, but because they don't owe outside investors money that we know of at the very least, they could effectively just coast along and be fine. Yeah. Then over prime, like, I mean, we we're talking about that Rager make that announcement where he's talked to the chief executive, like they report to somebody. So like they too, they too need to be able to make money. Like, it's kind of a good thing because Netmarble, Netmarble will want a return on their investment into Team Soli. So mm -hmm. they're probably will, a little more willing to give them a little more money to keep them going to make the game successful. But at, at some point in time, you got to cut your losses. So if it doesn't blow up, if it if it's not making money, they can just shut Overprime down mm -hmm. at any point in time. It'll, just, it'll be just like what we saw with Paragon. Epic just shut it down. And that was my going to be my exact point is is that investment especially coming from companies like that could easily just turn it off like a light switch and it's not making money it's costing us more than it's worth bye yep. there's very little there's very few of those large-scale companies that are going to put in potentially years of work to then see the payoff they're just going to shut it down move everyone to something else that may pay off faster all right i, I think that's about all i had to say on the topic unless you got guys got uh anything else you want to delve into or do you want to just throw out some final thoughts uh i think for final thoughts i think any of them have the potential to survive i don't think they all survive at the same time and i i would agree with the poll that i think and partly because i'm on the team right but <laughs> that two of the games will survive just out of the four just two of them will survive being likely to be one of the the paragon successors and ethereal out of that bunch Oda, you got any final thoughts? Not, well, a little bit. Uh, I, I think out of the Paragon, the Parazombies, like I said, I definitely think even if Overprime has a chance to succeed, even if it doesn't blow up over here, uh, Fault, if SMS doesn't start learning from what they're doing, I, I don't think coasting is going to work for them. Because I think eventually everyone's just going to leave the game. So if it keeps going the way it is, I don't think SMS is going to be here in three years. Even if they don't have any investors, it's, there's just not going to be a player base. Everybody's going to leave. I mean, because just me playing as steadily as I have from the optimization patch to now, 
it's progressively getting harder to get games the later in the night I go. Yeah. So it's like usually when NA is like from 6.30 to like 12-ish and then it starts to fall off, I'm having it fall off as early as 9.30. Mm -hmm. So I get like a two and a half hour span where I get decent games. And for Pred, like you guys said, if they don't start releasing things and don't tell anybody anything, it could die before it actually gets off the ground. So they need to get something moving. And, and Ethereal, when... for, for you guys, Jelly, all you have to do is not have a catastrophic failure on everything. <laughs> and I, I've told people this. If and when you guys go full release and everything's the way you want it, I fully believe you guys are going to be the next big game, hands down. Like, League of Legends, Dota, Fortnite big. Because that's... With as much changes that you guys are bringing into the mobile genre and the way you're doing it, I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's the art style is amazing, the sound from the music is amazing. I, I just really think that if everything goes right and goes the way you need it to, hands down, one of the top games. All right, I just think uh, it's 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 fun to kind of think about how things are going to go, but we really won't know until they're all out and playable, and then we can just actually compare pair them between each other. Because I mean, everybody shits on fault now, but what if Overprime and <laughs> Pred comes out and they're they kind of they kind of suck and they're 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 way behind because they haven't been out forever, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. Fault's the next big thing. You never know what's going to happen with these games until we can play all of them. Um. I think Ethereal went the best route with just going a completely different game because, I mean, you guys weren't even supposed to be a Paragon successor, but uh, that's also a dangerous route because you don't have that built-in fan base like everybody else mm -hmm. does. But uh, I don't know. I, I think give it a year, and I think we'll we'll have a little more of a firm grasp on who will actually be able to survive. Um, and if Pred doesn't come out this year, I think that's going to be a huge blow to them with Overprime being out and fault being out like people might just eventually just forget about bread but uh mm -hmm. i don't know man it's gonna be fun watching it it's been fun this whole time there's been ups there's been downs but uh it's been a good time to, to to say the least so let's let's move on to plugs uh oda you got your 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 twitch and your youtubes yeah i got a twitch youtube i got a twitter that i'm kind of sort of working on using uh, it's under the same name. It's at Oda. Or, yeah, Oda917 because it's apparently my show is already taken. <laughs> so, if you want to find me there, I occasionally post uh, mostly retweets right now and a few words of nonsense every now and then. But yeah, Twitch, YouTube, you usually find me on Twitch. So, I'd we understand that we need to go beat the shit out of 916 other Odas. Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly, what you got? Well, I mean, you heard Mangoose, right? Tune back in for ETE 132 when we're talking about all these games next year. <laughs> and we'll be able to give you the full scoop on everything. Uh, no, but I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jellynees. Do Marvelous Monday, of course. And yeah, that's about it. What about you, Mangoose? I got nothing. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. There, uh, we didn't have a lot of updates, but I thought that topic was very interesting. I'm I'm happy with this episode, and I appreciate you coming out and joining us, Oda. And again, if anybody out there, you don't have to be a content creator. You just anybody who wants to come on here and has some opinions, and you don't have to have the same opinions as Jelly and I. There's a reason we got three people. Like that was one thing that got brought up to me. Like, I, yeah, if you disagree with me, then perfect I, I would love to have that conversation as long as you're not a dick about it and it's a conversation and not an <laughs> argument then you know let's do this but uh that is going to wrap it up for this week folks i thank you all for coming out if you're watching the premiere or if you're just watching the video as a standalone cool that's cool too but uh yeah uh we'll see you guys next week man goose Special shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.